Okay. Um, before I get started, I just want to say I'm not affiliated with the companies that I'm going to talk about in this presentation. I'm wearing MDMP's shirt. That's because they sent me this awesome shirt when I told them I was going to talk about their product in my presentation. They're just really cool like that. They didn't have any input. They don't know what I'm going to say today. Um, so I'm not, I'm not here to promote them. I'm not their sales guy or anything like that. Um, this slide is really funny to me personally. I'd be really surprised if more than one of you, two, one or two of you got it. Um, if you want to know more about it, ask me at the end. <laughs> this is the kind of thing to make me laugh so that I feel good up here. And it's not so much for, for all you guys. <laughs> um, let's see if I can get it from here. Okay, so we're all a bunch of WordPress geeks here. And uh, for a few minutes to kind of set up everything and tell you my story, I want to get really nerdy. Should fit right in with the Comic Con vibe uh, pretty well. So, this is our two year old Lorelei, uh, and she absolutely loves the movie Moana. Now, if you have young kids, you'll probably recognize this, but there's this kind of strange part of the movie where Moana follows Maui to a place under the ocean called the Room of Monsters. And it's where monsters go after they've been killed. So if you have younger children, you'll probably recognize this as the part where there's a giant crab who sings that song, Shining, right? Um, one of the com and this is like a common theme in legends and fables and stories and stuff like that, and where the, the hero, uh, or the heroine, has to go to the underworld or hell in order to uh, experience sort of a symbolic death um, or bring back a loved one or something like that, or bring back a, a special or sacred object that has power. In this case, it was, it was Maui's cook. Um, and then they have to reemerge with their loved one, the, the knowledge and power of the object, whatever, and um, to be able to continue on their quest or to, to finish their quest. And that's exactly what happens here. Moana and Maui are able to flip the giant crab on his back and they get Maui's hook and they escape from the underworld, right? Um, so just one other quick example to illustrate real quick in Return of the Jedi, which I'm sure you're all familiar, familiar with. Talking too fast, I guess. Familiar with, um, Luke goes into the underworld of Jabba's palace and there he's able to bring back his friend, Han Solo, from a, a virtual death defeat the Rancor, kill Java, save the princess, and retrieve his lightsaber, all before we see one fuzzy, cute, unblinking Ewok. Or, um, if you believe in the special editions, then they're blinking Ewok. Um, so this, this same theme plays out in all kinds of stories and mythologies, as I said already. Whoops. Yeah. All right, here we go. Um, so I want to take you just briefly today on kind of my own hero's journey, if you will, into the dark underworld of WordPress hosting. <laughs> Maybe you didn't know there was one, but there sure can be one, as, as, I'll, as I'll tell you a little bit about here. And um, it, it really was sort of its own quest for me. It didn't feel like it at the time, but I was trying to build a business on WordPress, and if your hosting doesn't work and you're having problems with everything, it's really hard to do. So there were, it, there is a dark underworld of, of WordPress hosting, and there are mythical monsters to slay, trials to be conquered, riddles to be solved, and ultimately new knowledge to be gained. So to jump in the middle of my story, I created a business called Fiddler Online, and we were building and maintaining WordPress websites for small businesses. So our goal was to make them very hands-off for the client. They don't have to know how to log in or anything like that. Um, we just take care of everything for them. Um, at one point, we acquired another small business that was uh, doing websites in a similar vein, so that helped us grow. I brought on a business partner named Kurt, who was our sales guy, and he was helping us grow. Um, and we also got set up on WordPress multi-site as part of all this, to be able to manage all the different uh, websites in one place, you know, bulk manage them. Seemed really great, at least when we got started. Uh, as we grew, we moved hosting several times for various reasons, but mostly related to issues with sites not running well. We'd gone from individual WordPress sites, uh, like I said, to multi-site, and um, things were going really good. 
for a while. <laughs> but as our main multi-site grew, issues started to creep up. The multi-site slowed down and started problems to return. So I made friends with this guy, and we'll call him Sam. Um, I don't want to, to make him out to be a bad guy here because he was really great and super helpful. Uh, he ran his own hosting company, had his own data centers and stuff like that. And he was a little bit like Obi-Wan or Merlin in some of these mythical stories, right? He was kind of there to be my mentor and guide me and help me through a lot of this stuff. And initially, we moved to his hosting and he was really helpful. Um, his team was too. Um, but fortunately, we went to places in the dark underworld <laughs> that he'd never been before. <laughs> we encountered monsters and stuff that, that he and his team just hadn't seen. Um, so it wasn't long before the demons, race, monsters, and other girls, ghouls started crawling from the darkness. It started with random downtime, then followed strange limitations on the sites, the next emails were not getting delivered, then it was slowness, now we were hacked, or, or were we? <laughs> Suddenly all the contents of all pages and posts were cut off after the first paragraph, then email wasn't being sent, next our server is sending spam email, now hard drive is dying, it just kept going and going. And like I said, many of these things were just totally new to Sam and his team, or to see them with that frequency that, that we were seeing, it just was blowing them away. Um, and so it didn't take very long before they started whispering, uh, whispering, started joking, you know, not where I could hear it or anything, but started joking about what they called the Fiddler Curse. Since my name is, my company's name is Fiddler Online. Um, they start saying there's a fiddler curse, and it's, it's, it's causing all these problems. Um, so at one point, <laughs> a car even crashed into the power center that all the data centers power runs through. There was a freak storm, and this person veered off the road or slid off the road in the rain or something like that, hit the power center, and they actually did have backup supply that it should have kicked over to. But that backup went through that same place, that same thing as the, as the power from the grid did. So when it knocked it out, it took out the backup supply to it. Had no way to get power. Data center, whole data center goes off, and of course the fiddler curse is, must be in full force at this point. Um, and so we, we tried all kinds of stuff to defeat these monsters. Um, we tried rebuilding the server stacks, we tried various WordPress optimizations, we bought our own server and installed it in their data center. Maybe that was a bad idea in, in hindsight on their part, <laughs> bring the curse home. Um, we even tried a totally different Linux stack in something called Innerworks, which is a cPanel alternative. Uh, and that had load balancing and real-time backup, but still we continue to have problems. Uh, no matter how much time, money, and knowledge we threw at it, the issues continue. No matter how many monsters we slew, we were still losing the war. Um, I recently asked my wife Jill about this time in our life, because my wife Jill likes it. Um, and she said, from my perspective, it's hard to know when to throw in the towel and say enough, because it's just not working. Getting the hosting sorted out totally changed the entire dynamic and perspective of doing our own business. Before that, it felt like we were building a dream on a crumbling foundation. And it, it definitely did. Um, and don't get the wrong idea from this picture here. Jill is not the damsel in distress. <laughs> she, she fought a lot of monsters along with me, they just weren't the technical kind for the most part. Um, uh, so it was all a lot like battling the Hydra of learning. We'd cut off one head and two would go, go back in its place. We'd take a breather for a week, it seemed like, and then here came the race. Uh, the stress of it all exacerbated an also a problem I had. But because I had it misdiagnosed, I thought it was something that, that there was no uh, solution for, no way to, to resolve it. And so even when I wasn't up at night dealing with hosting issues or whatever with Sam, um, I was often up in a lot, a lot of pain. I don't know if you know about gallstones, but they can be extremely painful. Um, and so then during the day, we should be networking or building our you know, new client's website or helping manage our team or any number of things. I was sleeping. I was trying to recover from, <laughs> from being up all night the night before. And, um, so instead of our business growing, it stagnated. We were really having a rough time. Uh, it really it ruined our vacations. It stole away family time. It punished me physically. It hurt our oops. Our client's business, it was pushing myself, Jill, and our finances to our very limits. 
It all seemed to come to a head when the pain of my gallstones became so intense I thought I was going to die. After two uh, visits to the ER and three days in the hospital, I gave birth to this baby. <laughs> um, and apparently there was even a larger one in there, but I broke it up between the time it took the ultrasound and, and pulled my gallbladder out like a day later. Um, so I return home from this with real world scars, not just mental and emotional scars of dealing with all this, these problems. Um, and it kind of opened me up to, and you know, taking a new look at things. What can we do different? Yeah, you know, how can we resolve this and quit having these problems? Uh, it felt a little bit like I died and come back, you know, at least metaphorically. <laughs> uh, yeah, and let's see. So, I was able to use that new perspective to start looking at everything fresh. And, you know, and so now we'll get kind of into what you came here for, was what we did, how we, how we got out of this dark time. Um, first part is the knowledge that I gained, right? We started by killing our multi-sites and traditional hosting setups. Instead of a single multi-site with one database where a problem could take down all the sites, in that multi-site we moved to individual WordPress installs for each site. We also pulled each site out of the multi-site, or I should say, as we pulled each site out of the multi-site, we and migrated it to new hosting. We went through the database and through the plugins and the code and everything to make sure everything was straightened <coughs> out and working great and optimized uh, to work well. Um, we also stopped running email. Uh, that I should have made that thing disappear at the end. Um, so multi-site shared hosting and email, these are bad ideas when you're trying to host a lot of sites. <laughs> um, so here's kind of my don't list, the things I learned that I, you shouldn't do when you're trying to manage a whole bunch of sites. Um, at least in my mind, there's certain, certain larger businesses, certain instances of scale where multi-site is a great idea, right? I'm not, I'm not trying to say it's never a good idea, but for this kind of thing, I'm working with small local businesses and I need to manage a whole bunch of sites. I need them to be online all the time. Um, and these are a bad ideas. So don't. Don't use shared hosting. Don't use, and I hate to really call them out, don't use cPanel, or at least the old versions. I, I hear it's gotten a lot better lately, to be fair to them. Um, don't use multi-site, as I mentioned, because single point of failure, right? Something goes wrong, all your client sites go down. Um, don't put all your sites on one server. Spread them out over several servers, right? There's a lot of options that way. Um, don't use your web server as an email server. It's called a web server. It's not an email server. <laughs> don't use your web server for DNS either. Uh, use your domain registrar for that, right? That's, that's what they're there for. Um, and it's one less, one less uh, connection that has to be made to figure things out. Um, don't send WordPress emails from your web server either. Uh, again, it's a web server. <laughs> Use something else to send the emails. Um, and, oh yeah, okay, I already covered that. So, let's go. So, as you probably kind of figured out, we eliminated cPanel. We got rid of the normal Linux hosting stacks that you see with shared hosting and things like that. Uh, we moved first to Cloudways, this one up here. Uh, there's, they're not the only one, they're just one I have experience with. They're a great option. And they have their own uh, stack that they install on top of a cloud host of your choice. So you can choose like Google, Amazon, DigitalOcean, <coughs> Voltaire, and there's a whole bunch of others. And so you can set these up, they're extremely inexpensive. You can just set up a server for you know 15 bucks a month or something like that. Um, and because they did, they have their own in-house stack uh, and they have their own management thing on top of it, it was just totally different from anything else we've done. So in cleaning everything up and moving it over, that seemed to finally break the curse, right? <laughs> we got rid of whatever that continued to plague us um, through all that process to move them to something new and fresh. Um, later we moved to Flywheel, as you see up here, and mostly I did that just to totally get away from having to manage uh, any of the hosting at all, right? They're a full service, WordPress only company, and there's a number of other good alternatives there as well. Um, 
but they just take care of everything. Like they won't even let me edit my WP config.php file, right? <laughs> they just totally lock it down, take care of everything. And initially I was like, ooh, I don't know if I can let go of that control, but um, uh, I started to realize, you know what, that's the kind of control that leads to all these messes. And if they have that control, then it's on them, and I get to let them go battle the demons. <laughs> so you have to <laughs> tell them focus when on you want it updated and embrace them to do it. Um, well, so they give you access to the WP content folder. So plugins, themes, all that kind of stuff you can update. WordPress support, you can actually <coughs> update from their, data, from their dashboard. You can go ahead and manually update it, or they will automatically update it periodically for you. So I really like them. I really like Cloudways too. Um, it's a little more involved. It's more flexible and it's cheaper, but it is a little more involved uh, to run on uh, Cloudways or something like that. Uh, and then when we moved to Cloudways, we also broke up the site, so we didn't put all 40 plus that we had at the time on one server. We fired up five or six of these little servers. Again, they're not very expensive, and we spread the sites out all over, over all of them, so we didn't have that single point of failure issue, where even if something bad happened on one site, and it took that server down, at least we're only dealing with 15 clients, instead of all 40, 50 clients that we had at the time. Um, And then, like I said, we stopped running email through our server, so that's the setting grid down here. They can, they can handle all your email sending, right? You set up their plugin on the WordPress site, and then email goes through their, their servers, and they're experts in email. And there's, again, great alternatives. I'm not saying it's the only one, it's what I use, it works great. Um, uh, so they worry about deliverability and all that kind of stuff. If I see a notification on my setting grid that says, this email didn't get delivered for some reason, all I do is ask them, say, hey, what's going on here? <laughs> Can you fix this? It used to be when I was running my own servers, you know, I'd have to contact these other companies and chase down these problems and say, you know, why can't my server deliver email to your server? And then we go back and forth and try to work out this whole big problem. Now, SendGrid just takes care of it, <laughs> um, which is awesome. Um, so, yeah, all this seemed to kind of break that. Break that curse for us. We were finally free. Things ran smoothly. The hosting was great. Um, we we're, were out of the dark underworld, if you will. Um, so, in order to replace multi site, we needed a way to manage all these sites more efficiently. We can't afford to be logged into every single one on a regular basis and updating plugins and all this kind of stuff. So, in place of multi site, we found MainWP. Again, there's some great alternatives. I'll tell you why I like MainWP. Um, First of all, it allowed us the bulk control, and I'll show you some of that here in just a little bit. And once we got it implemented, we kind of stood back and waited to see what would happen. And, um, sorry, when we got MainWP implemented along with the cloud hosting and all, this, all these other changes, we, we waited and we hoped and we crossed our fingers. And occasionally, you know, some ugly monster would show up, but by and large, we were done. We were beyond that phase, and things were so much better. Um, so we could start growing again. Our foundation was secure. You know, we could feel confident in going out there and selling our service to small businesses who needed it. So what I like about MainWP is that it runs on top of your WordPress install. It's in the WordPress.org repository. So you can install it from there, which means it's GPL license, right? That's, for me, that's a big one. I think that's important. Um, you maintain full control. The interface is fairly familiar. If I have one beef with it, I'm a designer, so it would probably be the interface. It's a little bit convoluted, a little bit cluttered. I'd love to see a redesign there. Um, but it's mostly familiar because it's in WordPress and it kind of follows at least a similar style to the WordPress interface that you're used to. Um, it's free to use the basics, and there's even an option to buy all their extensions with a lifetime. Uh, plan so that you just pay for it once and you're done. Some of the alternatives you have to pay yearly or you have to pay monthly in order to use it. Uh, they have great support and they have a really good community as well. Um, so I just want to talk a little bit about how you set up MainWP just so you kind of have a basic introduction. Um, this was a, one of your sites. So let's say this is a client site. You come here, I don't know if I can find better with that. Okay. You come here and you search. Main WP, and then you install the child, the child plugin, and you activate it. 
And you're going to set up a separate WordPress site that's just for main WP. This is going to be your, your parent site if you're used to multi-site language. Or this is, this is your dashboard where you manage all your websites from. And on that one, you're going to install this one over here, the main WP dashboard. It takes a little bit of configuring, but mostly it's pretty easy to set up. Um, once you've got it set up, this is kind of what you do. It kind of, as you can see over here, it kind of takes over the, the WordPress, or adds its own interface uh, to the normal WordPress one over along this side here. And so you go under Sites and Add New, and then you just fill out this information right here about the child site that you just installed the child plugin on, right? You can scroll down here and click um, Add this site, and it will connect to that site and add it to your main WP dashboard. Um, and I've, I've blocked out their domains because I didn't talk to my clients in advance to ask them if this is okay. <laughs> and it might go on WordPress TV, so you know, I, I'd want to just be safe here. But then this is what you get. You can go to sites and you get a list of all your, your websites that you're managing. And you can hit these icons to quickly do different things to manage them. You can see <coughs> uptime stuff. If you get the extension and use uptime robot to monitor them, you can uh, you can see their uptime data and all this kind of stuff. Um, let's see. And this is this is probably the thing I use the most. Um, oh, sorry, wrong slide. <laughs> so this is the dashboard for one of the individual sites right here. And as you can see, um, I'll try to point with the mouse since I'm not tall enough. As you can see, you can quickly you can add notes for the client. You can go to the the dashboard for that site, go to the front of the site. Uh, you can even do security scan again with an external integration. Um, you can, here's the uptime monitoring again. You can see what plugins they have. You can check out recent posts down here. And there's a, there's a bunch more. Again, kind of a little cluttered. You have to get used to it a little bit. Um, but it's tons of really helpful information that you can access really easily and quickly. Uh, this is where I spend most of my time when I use main WP. And this is the update section, as you see uh, over here. You click this right here, updates. And then you can see all your updates. So right now, all my sites are updated uh, the latest version of WordPress. But I've got a bunch of plugins that need to be updated. Uh, Monarch here, you can see, is on a whole bunch of our sites. And so an update just got released, and it needs to be pushed out to all of them. Then down here, you've got theme updates. And so I can pick how I want to do this. I can say, oh, update all of uh, just that <coughs> plugin. Or I can say, update all the plugins across all my sites. Or just update everything. Just, just do it all. <laughs> have you had any issues? I've, I've used this after you suggested it to me. Have you had any issues with anything crashing after you use that update all? That has scared me because it's done it to me once. Um, yes, not because of main WP. It was because of the update, though. All, okay. all of mine, it was you know, plug-in conflict, a theme conflict, something like that. Okay. So usually, we've gotten to where we know pretty well. And you can tell it. You can say, hey, I want to automatically update. For example, I think Monarch here is set to automatically update. So it's showing up in this screenshot. But within the next hour or two, it probably updated all of those for me. Uh, sorry, just, just a second. Um, uh, so we've gotten pretty good at figuring out which plugins are I guess maybe better staffed, <laughs> if you will, and so they test them more thoroughly. And so most of those we say, go ahead and automatically update them. If something does go wrong, our uptime monitor for uptime robot is going to alert us, and so we can go check it out and make sure that everything's okay. And actually, on that note, I heard it. I've seen this really cool service. I haven't tried it yet, but it'll actually like take a screenshot of the home or of the pages of your sites and compare them against old ones and let you know if there's a major change. So if, if you haven't been changing the content on that site and it says, hey, this site's changed, you know, this page has changed by 40%, then you know something probably broke. So that's a, another cool tool that I, uh, I haven't tried it myself. Um, so yeah, again, we have certain plugins we know that we have to be careful with. For example, WooCommerce is a really good one. Very well built plugin, but when they release a major update, it's a major update. <laughs> And so we'll update it here a lot of times, we'll bulk update it, but then we go and check all the sites individually that have the commerce on it. Does that answer your question? Yes. Yeah, we do about 150 plus sites on 
using this. And, okay. We found that we pretty much have to do a plug-in at a time instead of it or it didn't matter and everything. It will get halfway through and then something will crash out. It'll stop. We, and we kind of like to do that anyway, but especially with the major plug -in, just We don't like to mix it all. Yeah. And it, I don't know, it does take a while. Yeah, it can't take a while because it's using your server wherever you installed that yeah. dashboard plugin, and then it's connecting to either the same server where you've got your client sites or other servers where their sites are. It's been awesome. So, cool, it's good. good. Yeah, it's worked really well for us. Uh, again, like I said, they have really great support. So when we've had experiences like that, sometimes we're all update, we'll quit halfway through or something. We just contact support. And they've always been able to help us optimize things and work things out. Ever since we moved to Flywheel, though, we've had almost no problems with it. It works really well on Flywheel, at least for us. Will it back up the database before you do anything? It does have that option, yeah. I think you have to use a third-party extension. So you'll, or excuse me, not third-party. It's one of their extensions. That's one of their paid extensions. There's a couple different options that you can install them. And they, there's different extensions that work with different backup plugins. So you install that backup plugin on all your child sites, and then the extension will allow you to manage it. So it can say, okay, we're about to do uh, an update, but you have your settings set to backup first. So we're going to go to that site, we're going to back it up real quick, and then we'll run the updates after. Does that make sense? That's the backup for It works too. Extension, right? That's, it works really well. I think they've broken it down. They used to just have one main one, but I think they've broken it down based on which backup plugin you want to use on your child sites now. So you, you get the extension that, that matches that. It's nice if we use Draft Plus and it'll even warn us before we'll say, hey, this site has not been backed up for such and such time. Are you sure you want to do this? Yeah. It's, it works. Yeah. yeah. I don't use it. Our sites are, are updated infrequently enough because we're working with small enough businesses that are our, our flywheel backups. Flywheel does backups on a regular basis for us that we don't really bother with that. I used to use it when we were on Cloudways though. It worked great then. Um, let's see, how are we doing on time? Just about 10 minutes. 10 minutes? Okay. Um, so we should have some time again for more questions if you have more questions. Let me let me move on here for just a minute. Um, what we sometimes the worst ghouls or monsters are the ones you can't see. Maybe the ones in your own habits and things like that. Um, so we recently realized that there was something we were really missing as far as optimizing our ability to you know do a lot more for all these clients with a very small team that we have. Um, a lot of times when we would interact with them, we kind of base that interaction on what we, we interacted with them last time. It might have been six months ago. We had this vague recollection of, you know, they were really happy with us at that time. <laughs> it's not a very good continuity there. It's not a very good way to take care of your client. Um, and we also realized that along with that, there we had, by by doing this, by breaking everything down and kind of outsourcing everything to the experts in each of these different fields, we've created a lot of different places that we have to go in order to manage or you know make an update for just one client. Um, for example, we have their WordPress admin, their main WP dashboard that I showed you a little bit ago, uh, their hosting admin, their tag on Asana, which is our project management software. Uh, so all the everything tagged with their domain is are their tickets, right? They're things that we're working on for them. Um, their Stripe profile, their up, uptime robot uh, dashboard that tells us all the uptime data on them. Their domain management, and we also have a project folder for each client on Google Drive. So we've got all these different places we might end up going just to take care of one support ticket for one client. Um, so typical WordPress fashion. <laughs> build a plugin to try to help us out with this. Um, and then we call it Client Profiles, it's a terrible name. Uh, we need to think of a better one, uh, you guys might can help us out. So I just want to show you what we did, and, and then you can tell me if it's something that you, know, you think might be useful to you and, and help us uh, determine the future of it. So the front of your main WP dashboard site is just nothing, right? It's just a, 
It's not used for anything. That's how you how they recommend that you set it up. So we thought, why don't we take an uh, advantage of this opportunity and we build this plugin. And so we can start searching, as you see up there at the top, we can start searching for one of our clients and it'll, it'll auto suggest. And then if we select that, we get this little dashboard for that client that we built. And up here at the top, as you can see, we see their domain. Everybody on our team, or every client we have, has a team member that is responsible for their, their site. So they don't have to necessarily handle every ticket, but they're responsible to make sure that they all get taken care of. You can see up here how long they've been with us, kind of give us perspective on, you know, is this a long time client, is this a new client, what do we need to do there, um, how much they're paying us a month, and, and also how much a year, so again, giving us perspective there. We can have their contact information, really easy to access over here. We can make important notes that are things that we need to remember every time we're interacting with that client or we're dealing with their site. Um, we can see what plugins they have that are maybe unique to that site that we don't run on every single site we have. And then if we scroll down here, um, we call this processes. Again, I don't know if that's a very good name, but um, we can put in stuff so we can say, this is a common thing that they ask us to do. Like maybe they ask us to send out a newsletter every month for them. Um, and then here's the process for doing that. We can even embed a video to show somebody how to do that. So if, for example, one of my team members turns a task over to me, and I don't remember how to do it, I can <coughs> see right here you know, what, what it is that needs to be done to take care of that. Um, so going back up here to the, to the top, I just kind of skipped over these buttons. These are probably what you're already imagining they are. <laughs> We can click on each of those to jump to all those different places that we have for that client. So it makes it really easy for us to quickly get to all of those places that I mentioned. So if we click the first one, it's going to go to our uh, the dashboard, or excuse me, the WordPress admin for that. If we click the next one, Flywheel, it's going to take us to the Flywheel dashboard uh, for that site hosting dashboard. If we click the, for example, the Uptime Robot one over here, um, it can take us to the uptime robot dashboard. Five minutes, okay. Um, and then to show you how this looks on the back end, um, it's just a custom post type, right? You're, you're all WordPress people. <laughs> so it's just a custom post type with some custom uh, metadata added. I'm not going to go into it a whole lot. I think you guys can connect that pretty easy. You're used to looking at this kind of stuff. But just as an example, we put in how much they pay us monthly. And when they join, when they became uh, one of our members, is what we call them. We can set the featured image. There's some the important notes. And well, as you saw here, this is the process. This is just the body of the post. Um, important notes. Who's responsible is just the author. And then some, some fields here to uh, put in the links to all those different destinations that we want to go for that. Uh, that's five fingers plugging into the plugin. <laughs> Okay, so how do you, back to what I start, what the title of my presentation is, how do you increase your bandwidth? Well, you use really great tools. Um, you outsource everything you can, so like SendGrid I mentioned, get really great hosting. There's a bunch of other services we use that I haven't mentioned. Uh, I'm trying to keep it focused here, but uh, outsource all that stuff, if other people can do it better than you can do it, especially if they can do it cheaper than you can do it. Um, focus on your superpower. So if you're a designer, again, outsource all this stuff so you can design, because that's what you're really good at. Um, or if you're a developer, you know, so you can code, or whatever it is that, that you do the best, focus on that thing by getting rid of this other stuff. And then use the tools that multiply you. So like MainWP, um, like Syngrid that I mentioned earlier, or even like this plugin that we've built for us to use internally. Things that multiply your efforts. That's how you can single-handedly manage hundreds of, of WordPress websites and clients and uh, with just yourself or just a very small team. Um, so I don't use business cards anymore. If you would like to contact me, you can go to this address. It's just WC for WordCamp and then Tevia.me. You can pull it up on your phone right now and take a note somewhere and on there is my phone number uh, you can email me from there there is also a form on there if you if you like that client profiles plugin that we that we built 
and you're interested in maybe using it for your team, so there's a little form there that you'll see. You can submit your name and email, and then I'll follow up with you. Because for now, we just build it for us. But if a lot of other people are interested in using it, then we want to hear what it needs to do in order for you guys to use it. And then we can have you help us beta test it and stuff like that and see about reducing it publicly. We're not planning to, but if there's interest for that, then we'll definitely do that. We love to give back to the, to the WordPress community and um, want to be able to do that. So yeah, pull that up if you want. Um, questions? Right here. Uh, the, the plugin that you guys created, you know, to kind of manage things kind of from the front end, um, is there any sort of authentication or anything like that so it's not like I can just figure out where your site is and start searching all your um, so, you know, yeah. I think that's kind of the idea behind keeping it sure. in the admin area. Yeah, that's a really great question. So we have a few layers on there. Uh, MainWP comes with, uh, it has an extension called Clean and Lock, where you can basically lock it down and there's can't hardly access it at all. We do a little different setup than that. I mean, we use that in conjunction with a few other things, but yeah, the front end of the site is private, so those client profiles are totally just for us to see. If people happen to know the address of our main WP dashboard, and they try to just go to the, the plain domain, it actually forwards to our main website, so it doesn't seem like there's anything there. You have to you know, know that there's a WordPress site. Which I want. Great question. Do you guys also host their domain too? Um, I've just kind of heard some ways that that might have issues like the lawyer and stuff. So That's a great question. I have not talked to a lawyer about it. <laughs> so if you're asking about liability, I don't know. We do it for convenience sake. Um, as much as we can, we encourage them to let us handle their domain for them and we include that as part of their monthly hosting. And that's born out of all this mess that I told you about. We'd have to switch servers and IP addresses so often that if we had to go around all these different places to update the DNS on every single one, it could take a long time to fix one of these problems. Unfortunately, I haven't had to do that for years now because of, of using better hosting and stuff. Um, uh, but what we tell them is the domain's still yours. We'll transfer it back to you at any time if you ask for it. We're not trying to hold it hostage or anything like that. Uh, it's your domain. We're just keeping it so that we can we have clients who forget to renew it, right? They ignore all those emails, like 10 emails, to say you've got to renew your domain. So it's that kind of thing. We're just taking it. So that's, what, that's kind of where I was concerned about, is clients never do anything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what we do. Uh, we think at the same time, like, I've had someone recommend specifically don't do that as a liability. So I was just wondering what you're I'm not a lawyer. It's probably something I should talk to a lawyer about at some point in time. Is there one more question? Yeah. Um, you can try an AWP with multi like managing multi site installs? I have not. I know it works. It can connect to the website. I, I haven't tried it. I've, I've used multi site very little since we got off of it. <laughs> yeah, have you guys um, used any alternatives over main WP that you explored, like Manage WP that just got purchased by GoDaddy and all these other ones? I use Manage WP a little bit in the early days. Again, great service, it's a familiar interface and stuff. Uh, you're paying monthly for it and it's all on their servers, so you know it's, it's just what you prefer. I used Infinite WP as well. I mostly didn't like them because they're not GPL and the interface is totally different from anything in WordPress, so you have to get used to this whole whole different interface. So. All right, thank you.